All right, we are back with the Desmos strategies for the Math 3 EOC. This is an example where we have two piecewise functions, and we're asked to find the value of 3 times h of 2 plus 4 times g of 1. And it would be a lot easier to do this algebraically, to be honest, if you know what piecewise functions are, which hopefully you do. But the purpose of this video is Desmos strategies, so I'll show you how you could do it using Desmos after we do this easier one first. So this one says a function is shown below. h of x, it's a piecewise function that has two subfunctions, and we're asked to evaluate that as well. h of negative 4 plus 3 times h of negative 2. So I'll start with this one because it's just a little bit easier to type a single function rather than two. So if I want to graph a piecewise function in Desmos, I have to first type the first subfunction, and then I have to add these squiggly brackets, which you can get next to the P button. So shift and then the just to the right of the P button. And now I can type X is less than or equal to negative four. Can't see it, so I must need to zoom out a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna expand it a little bit more so you can see everything. Now I can graph the second part of the subfunction, 20 minus three X squared. And that's when x is greater than negative 4. So this is what my piecewise function looks like on a graph. So to find h of negative 4, I can just scroll on the graph until I get to negative 4, which when x is negative 4, the h value is negative 13. So I know that the first part is going to be negative 13. So I'll make a note of that here. Now I need to find h of negative 2. So I scroll along the graph until I get to negative 2. And it's very delicate, but there I can see that it's 8. So it's going to be plus 3 times 8, because it's 3 times h of negative 2, and h of negative 2 is 8. So I get from that 11, and that's my answer. Now if you're having trouble scrolling on the graph, you can also type in x equals negative 4 and find your point that way as an intersection point and x equals negative 2 and, and find that point that way uh, but I prefer the scrolling method. Alright so let's go back to this previous question that's a little bit more complicated and it's only more complicated because I have to graph two piecewise functions. So first I'll graph h of x And then I will graph g of x later. So there's h of x. Let me make sure I don't have any typos. Looks good. And it asks for h of 2. So 2 is over here. h of 2 is 9. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note of that. It's going to be 3 times 9. That represents this first part of the expression. 3 times h of 2. h of 2 is 9. So I put 3 times 9. And I'm going to hide these because I don't need them anymore. And I'll go ahead and graph g of x down here. So I've got x squared plus 2 when x is less than 3. And then I've got x cubed when x is greater than or equal to 3. And when you want to type greater than or equal to, you just type greater than and then the equal to button Desmos automatically formats it. Or you can find it on the keypad there. Alright, so now I have my g of x function graphed and I want to find g of 1. So I can zoom out to see what the full function looks like. But g of 1 right down here. I need to hit the house button so I can get a little more precise. It is going to be 1 comma 3. So 4 times g of 1, 4 times 3, and I get an answer of 39. So are, is Desmos the most efficient strategy for piecewise functions? No, but again, my focus in these videos is Desmos strategies. There are other videos out there for algebraic strategies, um, which I'll mention at this moment. It's a guy, let me see his name. His name is Robert... Weissert. So if you want to see some algebraic strategies, 
in combination with Desmos strategies, you can Google this video and he, he breaks them down one at a time. So if you need question one, that's what you look for. Then question two, question three. This is a problem that you could check out his videos for. I'm going to focus on Desmos strategies. So we have a function h of x shown below. It's a polynomial, cubic polynomial. And this question says, what is the distance to the nearest hundredth of a unit between the two zeros that are closest to each other? So we're back to the types of problems in my first video where we're looking for zeros. And Desmos is a great way to do that. So I have 4x cubed minus 5x squared minus 23x plus 6. And I have these zeros. The question says, what is the distance between the two zeros that are closest to each other? So are the zeros on the left closer or the ones on the right closer? And I can see that the ones on the left are visually closer. And now the question is, how far apart are they? So to get from negative 2 to 0 would be a distance of 2. And then I go another 0.25 from there. So that's a total distance traveled of 2.25. If the question said, what is the distance between the two zeros on the right? Well, then that would have been 2.75, but it says between the two that are closest to each other. So we're looking at 2.25 there. Which function does not have the set of all real numbers as its domain? Again, we have to understand domain, vocabulary term here, which is the set of all possible x values. So for something to not have all real numbers as its domain, it has to have a discontinuity on the graph or a gap in the graph. So I just need to graph each answer option. This first one, if I zoom out, it's a smooth continuous curve with no gaps. So that's not it. If I graph option B, x plus 1 divided by x plus 3, I can see that has a gap right here, a vertical asymptote, a discontinuity. If I was sketching this function with my pencil, I would have to pick my pencil up when I got to here to continue the curve in the bottom right part. So that is the one I'm looking for. I just want to go ahead and graph um, option D real quick to mention something about Desmos. If you know anything about cosine functions, which hopefully you do have seen at least, you know that they should be waves, curves. And this is pretty flat. So, so that's not what a cosine function is supposed to look like. You have to click on the settings and change it to radians to get Desmos to graph cosine functions in the way that you want. And that will come up later. Um, but again, we can see that's continuous. So that's another reason why D is not the answer for this question. All right, we're back to solving equations. An equation is shown below. It's an exponential equation. So algebraically, we'd use logarithms to solve this. But on Desmos, remember the strategy is I can graph the left side. So y equals 9 to the negative 3x plus 2. And if I'm not careful, I might not notice that that's not formatting the way I want it to. So I have to go back up and put parentheses in the exponent to get it to stay in the exponent. So you have to be a little creative, a little persistent with Desmos sometimes. And then let's say that I forgot to say y equals when I'm graphing the right side and nothing shows up. And I zoom out to get to 48 and still nothing shows up. That's because I have to graph y equals anytime it's just a number. I can leave it out when it's an expression um, but it's better to just always put y equals for both sides. So I can zoom in to make sure I'm getting the x intersect, I mean, to make sure I'm getting the intersection point rather than some other point. And sure enough, 0 0.079 is that option, and there's no other ones that are close. This is one where Desmos is not going to be too helpful. So that gentleman that I mentioned, his videos might be better for this one. I'm focusing on ones where you can use Desmos strategies. And here's one where we can't. A function f of x equals a sine bx plus h has the following properties. Period of 6, minimum value of 2, the point f of 2.5 equals 5, and a, b, and h are all positive constants. So again, anytime we have a function with constants inside it, we can use Desmos to add sliders to represent those constants. So in this case, I have a list of options, and these options are lagging out. They only show up if I click on them, but it's pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6. So there's some things I need this graph to have. It needs to have a minimum value of 2. 
So I'm going to go ahead and graph the line y equals 2 because I need the graph to hit there at its lowest. I need to put it in radian mode so that it uh, shows up the right way. Sine and cosine functions must be graphed in radian mode. And this f of 2.5 equals 5 means that the point 2.5 comma 5 must be on this graph. So I've got to play with these sliders to get that graph up above the black line and going through that point and having a period of 6. So let's try to just do the ones that are easiest first. That's making it a little bigger, but it's not shifting it up. So let me try this H. Now that's shifted up, but it's not hitting the right point. So let me bring my A back down. And let me change my H a little bit more. And now I'm hitting the point. I've got the right minimum value, so I need to test the period. This period from negative 3 pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, that would be a distance of 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi, uh, which is not what I want. And b equals 1 isn't even one of the options. So let me try the options. The first option was pi over 2. So that messes things up. Let me try pi over 3. Now it still goes through the right point. It still has the right minimum value. And I can see that this distance from negative 4.5 to 1.5, the period from peak to peak or valley to valley, that distance is 6. So I have found all the correct possibilities. My a is 2, my b is pi over 3, and my h is 4. So again, that takes a lot of intelligence. It takes a lot of skill with Desmos to be able to figure that out in that way. And it's, it's a different strategy than, than algebraically. Both are equally valid in my opinion. This one, Desmos, is potentially helpful, but I'm not familiar with how we would use it, um, and I don't have time at this moment to figure it out. Uh, but if I get enough comments, I'll make a separate video for this one. We have another one here where we have to draw a parallelogram, and again, algebraic strategies are probably going to be the most effective for this one. So I won't make anything further on that one. This is one where algebraic strategies could be potentially helpful. I'll use the notepad for a second. Um, we have to know that the diagonals of a rectangle are equal. So it says FH and GI are the rectangles. Diagonals, they intersect at E. IE is 3x plus 4, so this little part is 3x plus 4, and EG is 5x minus 6. So that tells me that 3x plus 4 equals 5x minus 6, which is an equation, and I can use Desmos to help me solve that equation. But I still had to have the skill to know that I needed to create an equation. So I can graph the left side, y equals 3x plus 4, graph the right side, y equals 5x minus 6, and find that intersection point, which is x equals 5. So now that I know that x equals 5, I can answer the question, careful, that's not the answer, because it says, what is the length of FH? Well, FH is both of those is the same as IE plus EG. So, and they're already equal. So if I now plug in 5, 3 times 5 plus 4 is 19. And then each part is 19. So 19 plus 19 would be 38. So that's a tough one. You really got to see what the question is asking. Here's another example of once I figure out what is what is being asked? Uh, triangle PMT is shown below. I see three angle bisectors, so I know I'm dealing with an in center. Point G is the in center, so I know that GH and GK would be equal as well as GJ. So let me see. There's GH and GJ. I could graph set those equal to each other. So Y equals X plus three. Again, because in center is equidistant from all the sides of a triangle. And I'd get that x is equal to 4. The question says, what is the length of segment PG? So now I'd use the PG expression 4 times 4 plus 1, which is 17. All right, last one I'll have time to do. This is a circle. Anytime we're talking about a circle, we can graph it as it's written, and our circle will graph. 
I'm going to guess the center there is 2 comma 2, and it is. And so the radius distance from the center to that point from 2, 2 to 2, 4 